Hey everybody, welcome to the Spectral Collider channel. My name is Chance Odekirk, I will be your host. And today we're gonna to kind of be talking about how I discovered the rotational painting technique. Uh, it's a very interesting story and we'll try to kind of be quick and to the point with this. We have a lot that we're trying to culminate and bring together into one channel. So bear with us as we kind of get our footing and our formatting down for this channel. So to essentially start out like how I kind of came upon this method is that I, I kind of got sick of how critics or art curators would talk about other artists like they were their psychiatrist or their guardian angel or almost that they were kind of the artist's inner voice and they knew what the artist was going through, what they were struggling with, that they were an alcoholic or they beat their girlfriend and they, yeah, I think that's subjective and it, it just felt very disenchanting that these critics and these curators and these people viewing this art felt like they knew so much about these artists and inside of their minds and in particular I was reading a book about Salvador Dali and this art critic or curator whoever wrote the book just they they were really coming across as if they were like his guardian angel and they just knew everything and that bothered me tremendously because Salvador Dali was a genius over and over and over again and incredibly hated by so many people. I mean, surrealism. What, what comes to mind when you say surrealism? Dolly, right? And <clears throat> you know Dolly was kicked out of the surrealist movement, right? Right. So it kind of shows you that how crazy the world can be and even back then and I'm sure it's a zillion times worse right now. So imagine the godfather of the Surrealist movement actually being kicked out of the Surrealist movement. So just kind of let that sink in for a minute and, and you know if you kind of mull around the idea that these other Surrealist painters at the time and <clears throat> if they were alive today, what their thoughts would be as far as their projections and judgments of Dolly and Viva La Dollars and, and like a, a lot of artists try to kind of put him on the stake and hang him out to dry. And the plain fact is um, he just ran circles around every artist at that time of at that time period and so that kind of made me want to create a painting that had no form or specific types of lines or patterns any of that kind of like archaic imagery that our brains kind of go to if you just start drawing or doodling or something like that and so this painting I ended up doing kind of looked bland very abstract because there was no specific shapes or forms or lines that I, I, did, I didn't want anybody to be able to derive any information from the painting and just because I, I was kind of sick of everybody feeling like they could read the painting like it was a newspaper and knew verbatim what it was conveying and meant to say. And <clears throat> so that kind of challenged me to question that assumption and I decided to paint that painting and then for some reason I turned the painting to kind of see what it looked like at another angle and when I turned it all of a sudden these lines and shapes and textures and everything kind of re-emerged just because I changed the angle of everything as far as how everything was meant to be viewed and so then for practice I decided to paint again all the lines and shapes and colors to kind of not look like any specific shape or pattern or form and then for some reason I decided to turn the painting again and of course all these lines and shapes and images kind of started to jump out that your brain starts to try to kind of decipher and make sense out of and then for some reason I decided to paint it again for practice to not look like anything and then once I achieved what I thought kind of had no resemblance of any types of shapes or patterns and stuff, then I was like, okay, well, huh, 
this painting's kind of cool because it hangs four different ways. What if this painting moved by itself, like on a motor and rotated? And I was like, oh, wow, that would be really cool because this, this can be viewed any way. And then I was like, well, a square frame that has the corners, and if you see that rotating, it, the corners moving and turning is going to look kind of ugly and just cause too much distraction for the eye away from the painting. And then I was like, wait, wait, wait. If this is a circle, and if a circle is rotating, you don't know that it's rotating unless there's something in the center that shows a position in, in place in time, like an access point. And so, for example, if you have like a hula hoop and you're just turning that, it's always kind of, there's no up, down, left, or right. So the outside of the hula hoop, as it's turning, there's no point of reference of what should go where and this is why. And so a circle has kind of a <clears throat> universal anonymity as far as definition goes, as far as its point and place and time and so many different things. And something else that's kind of interesting, if you put your finger on any point of a sphere or a ball, it's always center, if you kind of think about it, like it's, because it's, it's an even shape. And so the circles are very profound, how they connect us and how, how they've just been around forever. It's kind of like our DNA's DNA. And, and so I had the idea to put this or create these paintings and I was like, okay, well, if these rotated about the pace of a standing still cloud, that would be amazing because it allows you kind of to kind of just to daydream on the painting and you can see these different shapes and lines and colors and create these different things with your imagination. It's, it's like exercising your brain. And I was like, wait, okay, well how do we do this? And, and so that's kind of where it was born, using a circle, having something that doesn't resemble any type of archaic form or imagery or pattern. And that's actually how our brain's pattern recognition ability works, is that we've grown up with a, a horizon line in front of our view field ever since the origin of humankind. And so we have this up, down, left, right orientation and bearing with us. And once you throw motion with a circle in it and you give all these shapes and lines and colors, and then it starts turning and moving, it disrupts your brain's pattern recognition ability. And instead of being like, oh, this is that, this is this, oh, this is this, and this is that, and da -da -da -da, this means this. It allows it to kind of shut that off and go into more of like an observation. And there's still going to be critiquing going on and still kind of trying to figure things out or just your brain is being creative as it's currently viewing the shapes and lines, changing angles and perspectives. And so it's a powerful way to exercise your imagination in the creative process and just seeing how many things you can see in that one thing in it. 360 different angles and show it teaches you to see something every single angle 360 degrees which is pretty profound as well but having um, this kind of disrupt your brain's pattern recognition ability is kind of where some of the magic happens and so once this kind of took place in form there was a lot of okay now how do I build these what type of motors do I use and then I found out that like okay I can use some motors that are very very slow so you can barely barely tell that the painting's moving or you can use motors that move a little bit faster and all sorts of different rpms and we'll expand on this more eventually and whatnot but that's kind of how the idea was born and where can I find these frames and circular frames and oh there's not really too many of these and the, the maybe like clocks or something like that but I ended up having to build all of my circular frames and then how do we mount a painting on an access or on a motor shaft and have it balanced and secure and how, what's our weight limit? What are we going to use for the backing? And all these different types of things are these battery powered? Are these powered by a plug? And now you see a cord. And there's so many different variables that we have that I've put in all this work and I've done hundreds of 
hundreds of times I've failed as far as trying to figure out ways to mount these paintings and I, I finally have a solid way now to create and manufacture and produce these and so I'm going to share that step by step in a video as far as how we build these, what goes on and all the kind of roadblocks that I hit and passed and, and got over and now we can just more get to the heart of making these and sharing these and having fun creating and so that that's a, just a bit as far as kind of where that idea came from it kind of started from people thinking or critics just kind of talking too much about an artist and feeling like they they knew everything about this guy and so I kind of wanted to paint something that nobody knew anything about me from and kind of broke open the egg from there and I've just been running with it since and so I hope that gives a good bearing on all of that and so once I kind of got some of the brainwave research done and I had my footing a little bit and, and kind of trying to market this new art technique with rotational paintings and and, and how, how, how can I be taken serious when I'm talking alpha, beta, theta, gamma, and delta, and, and frequencies, and Schumann resonance, a lot of people think it's kind of some hippie bullshit. And that's fine, and I understand where they're coming from, and you know, you have to put in the work, you have to show the merit, you have to show you know what you're talking about with the experience, and put in the time. And also that's another reason why I'm in school, and um, not the reason, but another part of it is just so it gives my footing that much more uh, of a foundation to stand upon when I am talking about frequencies, when I am talking about brainwave analysis and that these studies were done with the device that's used on the Dr. Oz show. I studied with the actual inventor of the IBVA for six months. He lived with me and we did these studies and I kind of know what I'm talking about. I know that sounds a little arrogant to say, but like on a ground base level, I got the credentials, like I, I am not a brain neuroscientist or whatever, but I, I've studied with one of the founding fathers of EEG. This guy is mentioned in textbooks at universities and um, he, he was a major part of one of the world's largest exhibitions, I think in 2011 at the Central Bank of Brazil. Like This guy is kind of a juggernaut. and. Um, I, I could just feel the, the groups and people around that I was talking with and um, that this just was not something that they were familiar with and probably was a bit over their heads. And it is, to be honest, with most people. Like, most people don't know about brainwaves or what brainwaves do and how. Oh, okay, yeah. But it, it's, it's very in-depth how all this stuff kind of works. And once I actually kind of created some of that footing in getting my or working on that right now with my degree and everything so I can have that and show that this is something that I'm passionate about this I am serious no I'm not making this up and and yes I will be doing this 10 years from now five years from now like we're I'm going forward this is something new this is something um, raw and original that it's, it's hard to bring to fruition it's failed you know numerous well I wouldn't say it failed but it, it's had its times of stagnation it's had its times where I felt I I didn't know where to go next with this and all that different kind of stuff or maybe this idea is just a crazy idea that I've had and oh shit you know but like no there's more to it I, I can feel this living and breathing and I, I can I, I know that there's a path for this and I'm going to be there for that journey and share this with the world in creating this technique and how we do this and that's a little bit as far as how I created it, how I discovered it and a little bit about the brainwave science and kind of why I'm in school and how like why I'm being an artist slash freelancer slash uh, creator all in the same things because I'm tying so many different things together and this is the strongest way to build all this and show this cohesively is through all these different networks and it's just gonna make it that much greater really at the end of the day and, and share this with that many more people so thank you guys so much for listening have a great day and we'll talk to you soon